Hello again everyone, this is Steve Bishop continuing our series on Programming in Access 2013. We're still in our database section where we're organizing our data and getting it prepared for uh, what will eventually be our user interface. So, last time we created our table uh, of employees. Uh, we entered in some data for our employees including a really bizarre looking website name for myself and we showed some sort of disparity in wage between a uh, man and a woman apparently by giving me $60 an hour and $20 an hour to the woman and just so we don't get anybody complaining about that I'm just gonna go ahead and make sure that she wakes more money than I do so no one's gonna complain and um, I think that's probably being born I don't know today is the 21st so being born today is probably not good uh, let's make this I don't know let's make her younger than me so let's go with, I don't know, uh, 05, 12, 19, I don't know, um, 85. Okay, there we go. So, now that's obviously not a real person, not a real date, but anyway. So, now it's time to organize some more data, and that is our customers. Because one of the things that we're going to be keeping track of in this database is obviously our customers. And you may be looking at this. I pre-made this table up. And you're probably looking at this going, well, wait a minute. He's only got two fields in here. Doesn't he want the phone number, address information, et cetera, et cetera? Well, that's true. I do want to keep track of addresses and phone numbers and such. Um, and a client's going to have a lot of different information. But if you think about it, if you're going to have more than one thing for a particular customer, you probably don't want to have that in a table because let's say they have a shipping address and they have a billing address and they have an office address. There's three different addresses that this customer could have. So rather than saying, okay, so let's just think about this. If I did a office uh, address line one, okay, then I'm going to have to go office uh, address line two and then office address oh wait office uh, city I don't know okay if I then had to go and do okay well now that they have a billing okay uh, billing address line one etc and I'd have to go you know a I'd have to make so many different columns, one for for the office ones, for the billing addresses. My, my table is eventually going to get really, really long with all the information I want for a customer. So rather than do this, I'm going to just go ahead and delete all this. The only thing I really need right at this particular point for this table is just the customer name because most of the other data is going to be, we can actually hold in other tables and then we can say, well, this address actually belongs to this customer. And we'll show you how that works. So I've got this table called addresses. And you'll notice that I also I do something called pluralizing. I, I add an S's or customers or employees and address types. Okay, so when you name your tables, you want to give them the plural name of what it is that you're containing in that database. That's just good business practice. And you'll notice here, the first thing that I have here is customer underscore ID. Now, you're probably thinking, well, wait a minute. Okay, what, 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 what's this all about? Well, customer ID. If I go to the customers table, I have an ID field. In my addresses, I have a customer underscore ID that is a data type of numerical. What this is called is a foreign key. And you'll probably notice that in both my employees table when we were looking back here, uh, if we look at the design view of it, I've got this ID field and it's got this little key symbol next to it. And again, I have ID field with a key. And again, ID field with a key, etc. Well, when I say that I have a key. This is called a primary key up here. And you'll notice that the primary key thing is highlighted here. That's because this is what makes this particular entry, data entry, unique. And I'll go back into the employees table. You'll see the ID number is unique. Okay. Steve Bishop is ID number two. 
Jane Doe is ID number three. And we could name this ID field anything we want, like, you know, we could say employee ID like we were talking about. But it's just ID is three. So this auto numbering field, okay, this ID field, which we gave a data, data type of auto number, it's going to automatically increment the ID field by one for each entry in the table. You see how cool that is? It'll automatically give this person a unique ID. And that's very, very handy because you don't, you know, we want to make sure that the, each one of these rows can be identified uniquely. Okay? So now we can use that to our advantage. When we go into our customers, we have uh, just a regular Joe Schmo customer. Let's come up with a company name. Let's go ahead and enter in some data here. We'll say, uh, let's give us a uh, Metro Properties. I don't know. Some some interesting name, okay? Metro Properties. We'll give it that. And they've got an ID of 1. So we'll go ahead and save that. And then when we go to our addresses, we can say when we go to enter in information that the customer ID, which is Metro Properties, is 1. Okay? So that's how we relate that this particular address with this address line one and line two and city and state belong to customer ID of one which is Metro Properties. So that we don't have to create this customer list that has you know these hundred different rows of information. Instead we can have a customer ID one and we'll get into the address type in just a moment uh, with an attention to particular person, address line one, address line two, city, state, zip code. Okay? So that's how we organize our data and that's how we relate this line of data, this information, this row, back to this particular customer. Um, address types. You're probably wondering, what the heck is, is he got address type for? And I may have uh, screwed up here. Did I make sure? No, nope. yeah, it's not supposed to be short text. This should be auto number. There we go. Okay, so Auto number, uh, we've got our, our, excuse me, our address types. Address types is kind of important because this is kind of the thing that helps us identify what kind of address we have. And rather than, you know, making this, um, making the address type a text box that we would populate, I want to be also organize and, and keep track of our address types uh, in another table because maybe I want to change this. Right now I have three different types. I have office and I created a sort order here too so that we can have an order in which these things appear. So, but I'm gonna go office, uh, ship to, and I'm gonna say uh, bill to. Okay. Or actually I can go ahead and add spaces in here because this isn't a column. This is actual data. So we have a ship to address, a build to address, and the office address. I'm going to give this a sort order of one. I'm going to say this is a sort order of three, and this is a sort order of two. So that means later on when we get into things, we can organize our data and we can say, I want office one to show up first, then I want build two to show second, and ship two to show third. We'll get into that in a little bit later. But so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to say, okay, for this address, which belongs to Metro Commercial Prop, or excuse me, Metro Properties, I'm going to say address type, which is back here, address type. Their office, okay, is going to be of type one. And then I'm going to say that this is going to attention of Joe Schmo. All right. And address is one, two, three. Main Street. Um, they don't have, well, I guess I could do, I don't know, Suite 101, City of Richmond, Virginia, and I have no clue what a Richmond, Virginia zip code is, but I'm just going to make one up. I don't know, 10025. I, <laughs> if I got lucky on that, I might as well go, uh, <laughs> if that's the actual zip code for Richmond, I, I'm, I, I should go apply for the lottery right now. So you can see how we relate our data here, okay? Our customer ID is one, which responds to, relates to the customer's customer ID of Metro Properties. 
and our address type ID here of 1 says that this address type is office. And then we have the rest of our actual information. Okay? We're going to stop here for right now. I'm going to get into a little bit more of this relational situation because it'll help when you graphically see it. There's really nothing right now that ties these in other than just in my brain. There's nothing, we haven't told the system in any way that these things actually relate to each other. Just in my head, I've just put these out this way. And it's important to do first. You map it out in your head how this is going to work. You put it into tables. And then later on, you tell the database how everything relates. And we'll get into that in the next step.